Hello, this is Paul Nelson with Westerns Ford Floors, Wyoming Wood Floors, coming to you from Clinton, Montana. Today we are going to talk power, hooking up your sanders to power. Some options for you, maybe some do's and some don'ts. A couple things to note, I am at best a hillbilly mountain man electrician. <laughs> I am not a licensed electrician, so if you really don't know what you're doing, these are just some concepts to introduce you to it. Hire an actual electrician, read a book, but educate yourself. Just just use this video as an introductory introduction to the concept of hooking up electricity. A couple of things, when you become a wood floor guy, and you have sanders, cords, electrical equipment, you're gonna have to know some basic things about hooking up power and wiring in a plug because if you've got to hire an electrician every time you need a plug rewired, it's going to be expensive for you. So these are just some concepts I'm going to introduce you to. We're going to talk particularly about three-phase, looking up for uh, the riding sanders in a gymnasium setting. We will also go into hookups for the residential contractor with your big machines, 220-volt two, uh, hookups. We'll talk three-phase power hookups. And I'm going to talk just a little bit at the end of this video about rewiring your sanders for high voltage three phase. I hope this will be helpful. Come along with me for the ride. Okay, so let's take a look at this power cart. <clears throat> Maybe we can bring the camera up close. Basically, we have two three phase plugs. We got three 220 volt single phase plugs. We got 30 and 50 amp breakers. <clears throat> what we have here is a four gauge cable so we can legally hook this up to a 100 amp three phase power circuit. Got this on a spindle so we get to the job we just spin this out. We do not make these three-phase power hookups on our own. We ask our customers that we're working for to hire an electrician they work with to hook this into their power panel. I ask them to hook that up, this up to a 100, or it'll, it'll work on an 80 amp circuit as well, circuit breaker. And a lot of times in the summer, if the facility is not real busy, they can take us uh, an existing circuit breaker from something else and hook this into it for the few days that we're sanding. But I like to hire the electrician since it's done correctly. And then all we have to do is unspool our cord here that powers our machine, plug it in, and we're ready to rock and roll. We built this thing probably 15 years ago now, and we've used it summer in summer out ever since i have no intention of putting plans or specifications or selling these things on the internet or in in any capacity i take the pictures and somebody wants to build one it's not that complicated okay so you've had a chance to look at the three-phase power cart that we've built that is my preference when we go into a gymnasium setting that we will have an electrician hook up that power cart however sometimes especially in the middle of the summer things are really rocking and rolling and we're busy what we will do is take a pair of pigtails like this a couple things about this set of pigtails you see that the plugs are wired in nice and neat there is some tape on here but it's just holding the pigtails together. I'm gonna to be pretty careful that you don't have pigtails or any of your cord that's beat up, busted up, cracked, and held together with tape where you're actually covering the factory rubber coating with tape. That's a big no-no in a commercial setting and you're gonna get called on that. But the, the beauty of a set of pigtails like this, that we can actually send them in a flat rate U.S. post office box, just send them out to the customer, and then ask the customer to have their electrician 
wire them directly into customer's box. And that is really nice to have that set of pigtails wired up and ready to go. We get on the job site, we're up and rolling very, very quickly as fast as, basically as fast as we can get that equipment in the door. So this is another option that we'll use for hooking up three-phase power in a gymnasium setting. The drawback to this option is now I only have two, I just have the hookups for my two big sanders. There's no 220 option available. And we do use 220 um, in our company with our trios. And sometimes we'll use a residential big machine in an alcove under a drinking fountain, somewhere where it's hard to get the rider set up. So we really like having 220 available and just doing this doesn't give us the 220 option. So the next thing we'll cover is, is the 220 option. Now, we have certainly used this in a gym setting where we wanted to be able to run a 220 piece of equipment. As I mentioned, a residential big machine in an alcove where we can't get our gymnasium riders. So how, how are you gonna hook up power? How are you gonna get that 220 power? If you're a residential guy, you're in a house, you need 220 power to run your big machine, I recommend that you go ahead and make yourself some adapters, okay? This is meant to plug into a dryer plug. I have adapted it to the same size plug as is on my big machine. This is the same thing, it's just a different configuration. This is a three wire configuration. Now, very briefly, I'm gonna talk about this. Why does this one have four pins? This one only have three. Both of these only have three. Let's just discuss that real briefly. For whatever reason, uh, some residential building codes require the fourth wire. And what it is, is it's a neutral wire. So you still only have two hots, you have a ground and a neutral. On your commercial machines, they only require the three, the two hots and the ground. So that's the only difference. What you have to do, if you have a dryer outlet that has this plug, is you have to figure out which one is the neutral wire. And obviously you're not wiring the neutral wire in here. So you have one more wire coming into your plug than what you need. It's not that confusing, but again, if you don't understand it, talk to an electrician or have an electrician help you make a couple of these adapters so that you're doing something that's safe, effective, and actually works. So the final thing that I want to demonstrate is this little temporary power panel that we built for residential work, but surprisingly, we use it on commercial jobs and gyms a lot as well. So you have your different dryer receptacles, and in your area, wherever it is that you happen to be working, you will find that there's only a couple, two, maybe three different types of dryer receptacles. And if you get different dryer plugs, put on your big machine plugs, you'll be in business. But I like further to have this temporary power panel. Here's what I feel like it does for me. So first of all, we're going into a dryer plug and then we're plugging in our temporary power panel. Here's what the temporary power panel does. It gives you your 220 volt receptacles and it also, we have 110 volt receptacles. What we find a lot in a house is that, and frankly, in a gym as well, they just don't have enough power to run your edger and sometimes not enough power to run your buffer if you're screening hard. And so by bringing in uh, the 220 power from the 30 amp dryer outlet, we can get really solid 110 volt receptacles that aren't constantly popping breakers on us. I really like having this power panel. It served us well. Uh, I've had this thing more than 10 years. It goes from job to job to job to job and it just always works. I have had safety officers and inspectors look at it on numerous times. Nobody's ever given them any hassle about it. You know, the, the cords are all in good shape. The receptacles all have covers on them. Just some basic steps to keep your electrical equipment in good shape and the inspectors tend to leave you alone. Here's an example of what you don't want to do. I bought a piece of equipment last year 
and this, <laughs> this, this came with it. And this is somebody that obviously wasn't paying attention. So have your cords in good shape. Don't have any tape on your cords covering up spots where they've been hit. And, you know, if they are hit or nicked or you run over one with a big sander, replace the cord. Don't have any tape on it. Have your equipment in good shape. Have a basic understanding of how electricity works. Your jobs will go a lot better. Now we're going to go out. We're going to take a look at our big sanders. Talk about rewiring them from uh, low voltage to high voltage. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, it, we have one of our gym floor sanders. It's got a 10 horse, three phase ball door motor on it. And I'm going to show you how to rewire that motor from low voltage to high voltage. <clears throat> well, that's a tad dusty. And we're going to have an outline for low voltage and high voltage. The machine is currently wired for low voltage. And what it's showing is that lines four, five, and six need to be wired together. And then the three hot lines, one hot line needs to be wired with nine and three, one with two and eight, and one with one and seven. So as I look at these wires, so my three hot lines are going to be red, black, and white. So nine and three are wired together with a hot line. So here we go, right there. Nine and three are wired together with the red hot line. And then one of my other hot lines is eight and two and the other one is seven and one. So then this one should be the eight and two. There's a two right there. And there's an eight right there. So now <clears throat> we've determined that this machine is currently wired for low voltage. Let's look at what we'd have to do to wire it for high voltage. So to rewire this machine for high voltage, the power lines, red, white, and black, are gonna coordinate with three, two, and one, and then six and nine are gonna be tied together, five and eight are gonna be tied together, and four and seven are gonna be tied together. Now, I'm not actually going to rewire this but I think I've, I've demonstrated that each one of these wires has a number attached to it. It's just really a matter of paying attention to the numbers on the wire and following the directions on the motor. If you do that, and rewire this motor for high voltage, which helps, helps, is required in situations where you have a customer that only has high voltage power. High voltage power is usually 440 volts. So that's how that's done. Okay, so coming back to final thoughts, I always watch these videos and I gotta go back at the end and correct anything that I, that I didn't cover to begin with. I want to talk about these power cables. We'll just zoom up on this one just a little bit. You see this cable? This is your ground and these two are your hots. This is your ground, these two are your hots. So then on the other one, the four pronger, it's the, it's the two in the center are hot, and these two on uh, horizontal ones are the grounds. So throughout the video, I was talking about a dryer. This will also work in a kitchen stove receptacle. They're, they're basically the same receptacle. So either a dryer, a kitchen stove, or sometimes an air conditioner, you can plug into for power to power your big machine. Just one other quick thing, we'll look at, at this plug, just typically for your big machine, that odd shaped spade on your big machine plug, that happens to be your ground. The other two are the hots, okay? Now, the other thing you may have to look into is that sometimes your big machine will only come with a 20 amp plug I've gone to 30 amp plugs on all of them. My reasoning on that is that generally speaking, a dryer or a stove is on a 30 amp circuit anyway. So I want a plug that's big enough to handle the circuit that I'm tapping into. Finally, I want to talk about what we, what we looked at on the three phase. If you do rewire 
your sanders from low voltage three phase to high voltage three phase be sure you rewire your your rider there's also a three phase motor on your rider and that has to be rewired as well that may look like a pain it's really not that hard just make sure you follow the directions wire it the way that it says on on your directions the benefit to that high voltage is those machines will run like you've never seen them run before. They love high voltage. They run smooth, they run faster. Uh, if you have a big job and the availability of high phase or, or high voltage power, it's worth the time to rewire your sanders. They really run fabulous. I hope this has been helpful. For Western Sport Floors and Wyoming Wood Floors, this is Paul Nelson. You make it a great day.